For my Funds of Knowledge assignment, I wanted to find out my students' learning preferences. And I thought that this would be a good thing for me to discover because especially this time of year, it is difficult to keep students engaged throughout lessons. Um, and I really wanted to know what my students thought about what we've done so far in the classroom and also um, what recommendations they might have for making class more engaging for them. So I also wanted to make sure that students had an opportunity to have a voice in what goes on in our classroom and wanted to gauge their interests on various subject areas, um, specifically so that I could see which students preferred certain subjects and which ones um, felt like they had less interest in that subject. So in order to do this, I created a Google form and had my students complete this independently. And this survey could also be done on um, hard copy with paper, but I just figured Google Forms would work best for me because it already goes ahead and represents the data for you through graphs. So that was really helpful. I did a combination of multiple choice and free response questions where students could comment on their specific opinions um, rather than just selecting a multiple choice option. And like I said, the questions are related to student learning styles and preferences. So some of the data that I discovered based on this survey was first, I had them answer which was their favorite format in taking tests and quizzes, because we do a lot of tests um, on the computer, but we also do a fair amount on paper. So I was just curious, based on student opinion, which one they preferred. So I actually had 90% of students indicate that they prefer taking assessments on the computer, and only um, two students who said that they like to take it on paper. So while this seems really simple, I felt like this is something that would be really easy for me to accommodate these students in the class and allow most students to take assessments on the computer if it works for that subject, and then also print out two copies for students who prefer to take them on paper. And in the end, it's not that much work for me as a teacher, but it allows students to have some say in how they do assessments and if it works better for them then they're more likely to perform better on that assessment so I hope to implement that in the class. Um, another question that I had my students answer was do you prefer to work with a partner in groups or alone and I had 60% of my class indicate that they prefer to work with a partner, 25% prefer groups, and 15% per, um, demonstrated that they prefer to work alone and I think in thinking about how I could apply this, I recognize that providing opportunities for collaboration, whether in with a partner or in groups, is both enjoyable for students, and most of my students prefer this, and it also supports their learning. So I guess it's kind of a win-win. And I think also in applying this, it's just important to provide a mixture of um, activities that allow students to work in different um, settings, whether alone or with their peers. And there are certain benefits for each of these, but just being mindful of um, making sure to provide a variety of opportunities for this. And I also noticed that the students who indicated they preferred to work alone are some of the quietest students in the classroom. And so I think in increasing their enjoyment with collaboration, I think just being intentional in selecting the peers that I pair them with, whether in a partner or in a group, so that they can get the most out of that learning opportunity and not feel either overshadowed or um, nervous or whatever in the group. So I think looking closely, not only on what the class data was as a whole and also the specific students in their responses has been helpful for me in understanding the ways in which I can best accommodate my students' needs in the class. Another one that I found to be interesting from my survey was does using songs for example, vocabulary and number rock help you learn material more easily. So my teacher implements a lot of songs in her lessons, and I've done the same. Um, and from what I can have been able to tell so far, the students really enjoy that. But I wanted to see, in their opinion, do you think it actually helps you? While it is enjoyable, is it helpful? And I actually had 85% of the students indicate that they think that it does help them learn material more easily. So I wanted to continue to incorporate music into um, the content areas where possible, but also maybe take that a step further and allow students to create songs of their own in order to remember content 
because if they enjoy music and they believe that it helps them, how much more will it help them to create songs of their own um, in order to memorize or remember information? So, and this would allow them to think on a higher level. So I thought that would be a really fun way to apply this and something that I definitely didn't know before giving the survey. Um, another section of my uh, student learning preference survey was what is your favorite subject and why? And then what is your least favorite subject and why? And how can I make your least favorite subject more enjoyable for you in the class? So this was really interesting. I had all of these were open-ended questions. So I received a variety of responses, but I learned that a large majority of my students prefer math and science to other subjects. And only one student out of 20 indicated liking ELA. Um, so that was really interesting to me. I think it's interesting. My teacher, my cooperating teacher, has a master's degree in math and science, and those are by far her favorite subjects. And so I thought that was really interesting. But um, almost all of my students also indicated that their least favorite subjects are writing and social studies, which came to no surprise to me because they're very vocal about not wanting to do these subjects in class. But in thinking about what can you do with knowing your students' least favorite and favorite subjects, I think it just made me think about how I can challenge myself to make those subjects more engaging and stray away from traditional practices, which are easy to rely on, especially in writing and social studies. So I hope to incorporate more technology when teaching these subjects because students also indicated that they enjoy when we use technology. And um, think about how I can personalize these subjects to be more related to students. And allow them to do more hands-on things and, like I said, stray away from the traditional practices and try and increase student engagement in those subject areas. So I think that that was definitely really helpful for me. Um, something that I would change if I was to do this again, well, a lot of things went well about it. I think it was really good that I used Google Forms because the data came back so easily. I really liked that I... Um, had my students all just at once instead of doing the survey as like an early finisher type thing because I know that my students might not have all gotten to it. But I think if I were to do it again, I would have asked more specific questions about specific activities we have done this year and their effectiveness for students. Um, so songs, lessons, technology tools, projects, etc. Um, I think this would have increased the use of the survey in informing my instruction because it would be a little more specific and less vague for applying it. So I would love feedback on things we've done, especially since I've been full-time teaching and have been trying out a lot of different things. So I hope to be, if I were to do the survey again, allow students to give feedback on certain things that have actually done because I think sometimes when you talk about um, projects or tech tools in a vague sense, it's harder for students to remember what we've done with those things. And so they can't give as honest of a response. And I think also I would have walked students through the survey before they took it to encourage longer responses and elaboration during the free response question. So I got a lot of short responses for those, which is totally fine. But I think the longer the responses, the easier it would have been for me um, to fully understand what my students think in regards to those things. And I think also maybe, um, and maybe I'll do this in the coming weeks, but have students discuss this. So they took it independently, but I would love to foster a discussion where the conversation was a little bit more open between my students and me so that I could um, kind of hear how students think about this, not only independently, but when they're having this open conversation with me and with their peers. So yeah, that's it.